हेलो फ्रेंड्स द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक व्हिच आई विल डिस्कस इज फूड चेन फूड वेब एंड ट्रॉफिक लेवल्स व्हाट आई विल डू इज दैट आई विल ब्रेक दिस टॉपिक इनटू थ्री डिफरेंट लेक्चर्स एंड आई विल मेक थ्री डिफरेंट वीडियोस द वीडियोस विल बी शॉर्ट एंड यू विल बी इजी टू फॉलो दैट वीडियो सो फॉर द फर्स्ट पार्ट आई विल मेक अ सेपरेट वीडियो फॉर फूड चेन इन द नेक्स्ट पार्ट आई विल मेक अ वीडियो फॉर food web and in the third part i will make a video for the trophic level okay now this video will only be made or this in this video i will only discuss about the food chain so let's start now what is a food chain we all know about food chain because we have studied food chain either i think from class 9th or 10th but uh, i will discuss it in a little bit broad manner so that you can either have your own ideas and you will have some new ideas on this topic now in a food chain we all know that in a habitat there are different organisms which are staying and one organism it feeds on the other organism what happens is that suppose this is a organism and it feeds on this organism it's this organ this is actually the food of this organism so what happens this organism it feeds on this organism but there may be some other organism which actually feeds on this organism so there is a sequence there are different organisms which actually feed other organisms for their survival and this way this chain by which one organism feeds on the other the other organism feeds on some other organisms that thing is called a food chain so how can you define a food chain a food chain is defined as the transfer of energy and nutrients from plants through a series of organisms with repeated process of eating and being eaten so one organism can eat some other organisms or this organisms may be get eaten by some other organisms so this process by which the transfer of food and nutrients takes place by the process starting from a plant by the process through different organisms is called a food chain now this will be clear once we take an example of a food chain and explain what happens over here so we have taken this example in the previous lecture that this is a food chain where the grass which are the autotrophs so we'll call them the producers they are the producers of the food chain they make can make their own food they are the producers now grass are eaten by the grasshoppers so grasshoppers are consumers so this is the first consumer which is directly feeding on the producer so we will call it a primary primary consumer so it's a primary consumer it's a consumer which actually feeds on the grasses the first consumer which actually feeds on the producers so they becomes the primary consumer now frog grasshopper is taken up or eaten up by a frog so frog becomes it is also a consumer but it it is now called as a secondary so i'm writing as this two degree this signifies secondary so it's secondary consumer so it becomes a secondary consumer this is a two degree over here just to show you it's a secondary consumer frog is eaten by a snake so snake becomes the tertiary the tertiary so i'm just putting sorry i'll just put three degree over here so this signifies a tertiary so it becomes a tertiary consumer and the snake will be taken up by the hawk or eaten up by the hawk so it becomes a quaternary consumer so this is the normal this is a food chain where the producers are eaten up by the consumers the first consumer which eats on or feeds on the producers is called a primary consumer the primary consumer is eaten up by the secondary consumer which is a frog in this case then the secondary consumer will be eaten up by a tertiary consumer which is a snake for this food chain and the tertiary consumer will eaten up 
by a quaternary consumer which is a hawk in this example. So this is a food chain and these are the different organisms of different trophic levels. Now in some books you will find different terms given. We have used this term primary consumer, secondary consumer but in some books you will find different terms. So I will just give you an example in some books you will find this type of terms mentioned. So what happens these are grasses are producers. Grass Uparts is a primary consumer we have said this is a primary consumer but in some books you will find it is written that grass Uparts are herbivores. Obviously these are herbivores because they feed on grasses or they feed on green plants they are herbivores. But herbivores are eaten up by which things carnivores herbivores will be eaten up by carnivores. So frog is a carnivore because it feeds on the grasshopper. But as frog is the first carnivore of this food chain, frog is the first carnivore of this food chain. So frog are sometimes called as primary carnivore. Similarly snakes, these snakes are called the secondary carnivore and hawks are the top carnivores because these are the carnivores which is at the top of the food chain. So they are called the top carnivore. So for this food chain for specifically this food chain you can see two types of nomenclatures. Grass are called producers we sometimes also refer to these graphs as autotrophs. They are autotrophs. They are eaten up either by herbivores. Herbivores always belong to the primary consumer because these are the first consumer which feeds on the producers. Then simultaneously they will be taken up by some carnivores which can be termed as primary carnivores or it will also be called as the secondary consumer. Similarly the snake they can either be called as the secondary carnivore or sometimes called as tertiary consumer. And last we have the quaternary consumer or the top carnivores. So this is a just example for a same food chain you can find different nomenclatures. So you have to keep in your mind which type of nomenclature you are using and you should follow that same nomenclature for describing a food chain. Don't mix it up. So when once we mix the nomenclature you are saying that correct thing but what happens is that that is not proper way for describing a food chain. Either you follow one type of nomenclature for describing a food chain. Now the food chain does not stop over here. This is the food chain we have used this food chain example in the last lecture also but you have to remember the food chain does not ends over here. There is a very important component that should be present in this food chain. Now in the first lecture we had talked about the different components of the ecosystem. Over there we had mentioned two important things. We have said that first there are autotrophs, then there are consumers as well as decomposers. So where does the decomposer fit in this food chain? Because once we are mentioning decomposers, there should be decomposers should be present in a food chain. Decomposers are there in every habitat. So where the decomposers will be fit? Can we put decomposers in between somewhere over here? No. Decomposers, I write decomposers over here. Decomposers. Okay. These are very, very important components of a food chain. Now what are decomposers first? These are the organisms which they act on some dead decaying organic matter and they do their natural process of decomposition. They break down the complex food into small molecules. Now we have also mentioned a term which is called detritivores. I will just write it down over here. Remember this term detritivores. What are detritivores and how they are different from decomposers? We have talked about this but 
I will again tell you that. Now, decomposers are all those organisms which break down complex food molecules into smaller molecules. They release the enzymes and ultimately they degrade the complex molecules into smaller molecules. So while doing so, they are doing the natural process of decomposition. What are detritivores? They also act on dead and organic matter. Dead organic matter. They, but what they are different from decomposers? They eat the dead or decaying matter and ultimately they break down the complex food into small molecules. So the difference is there. Detritivores they eat. Decomposers they release some chemicals and they degrade. So what happens is after they degrade that they take in that the small simple molecules but they are doing a natural process of simplifying complex food into small molecules. But for both detritivores and decomposers they act on dead decaying organic matter. Now where does decomposer stand in this food chain? For example, if the plants, the grass is there and it dies. So what will happen to those dead grasses? They will be taken up by the decomposers to decompose. Grasshopper, if they dies, grasshopper dies. So what will happen to that grasshopper? It can go to the decomposers. Decomposers will decompose that the dead matter it will feed on the not feed but it will actually release some enzymes on the dead matter and do decomposition similarly frogs after they die they will get decomposed snakes they die they will get decomposed hawk they die they will get, get decomposed so decomposers is there it's very important component of a food chain after at the end of every food chain should end with a decomposers. Although from the grass it can come directly to the decomposers. Grasshopper can ultimately come to the decomposers. But at the end of the food chain it should always end with a decomposers. Now detritivores and decomposers you can say in a broad term that detritivores can be a part of decomposers. But all detritivores can be decomposers because ultimately what they are doing, although in a different way, but what they are doing is that they are breaking down the complex material into small molecules. Although by eating it, detritivores does that by eating it. But decomposers, normally when we call decomposers, for example, decomposers are, there are fungi, there are bacteria, there are some microbes which do the decomposition. They release some chemicals, they break down the complex material into small molecules and they take in for their food. What happens is that after the decomposition is done from all this, there is a recycling of material and that recycling material either go to the atmosphere or taken up by the grasses or taken up by the new autotrophs or new the plants. So what happens is that, so suppose there is a food chain and some, suppose for example this hawk has died and it is taken up by the decomposers. So what decomposers will do, they will break down all the complex material present in the flesh of the hawk into small simple molecules, simple nitrogen molecules, nitrogenous molecules, carbon, it will ultimately decompose into carbon, that carbon will form carbon dioxide and go to the atmosphere. Those nitrogen molecules, they are different components of nitrogens, they will be made put into the soil and from the soil the grass will ultimately take in. So there is a recycling of the materials going on and that recycling of the materials can be done with the help of this decomposers. So in short, what can we say? There are food chains in a habitat and there are one organism is getting eaten up by the other organisms. By this way, there is a flow of energy as well as nutrients among each organisms. And ultimately, there is a recycling of materials also at the end where decomposers is acting. 
decomposers ultimately does that recycling process. So after the death of the hawk, the dead material is decomposed by the decomposers and that nutrient is getting cycled within the food chain again. So these is an example of a food chain. Now we have different food chains. I have taken one example, but there can be different food chains based on the different habitat. They are an aquatic habitat. It can be a different food chain where there are some phytoplanktons. There are phytoplanktons will be eaten up some zooplanktons. That zooplanktons will be eaten up by some fishes. The fishes will be eaten up by some larger fishes. So this type of, there are many examples. This type of food chain is there based on the habitat so there are different food chains so i think this is the example which i have taken and i think you have understood this examples of this food chains now food chains can be divided into two types we generally classify the food chains into two different types of food chain so i'll just clear this board and i'll write it Food chain are of two types. So right over here, food chains can be divided into two types. The first type of food chain is called a grazing food chain. Grazing food chain. The other type of food chain is called a detritus food chain. So food chains are of two types. One is called a grazing food chain, the other is called a detritus food chain. Now, what is a grazing food chain? The grazing food chain is a food chain where the sun is the ultimate source of energy. Again, just remember, the grazing food chain is the food chain where the sun is the ultimate source of energy. So, I will write over here, the sun is ultimate source of energy the sun is the ultimate source of energy and the sun's energy we have seen that the sun's energy will be fixed by the plants from the plants ultimately it will go through different organisms so for grazing food chain what happens is that the first member or the first member of the food chain is always a plant <laughs> So the first, I'll write like this, first member or the first component, first component of the food chain, food chain is a autotroph. For grazing food chain, the first component or the first member of the food chain will always be an autotroph because for grazing food chain, sun is the ultimate source of energy. So the example which I had taken just now, that grasses, grasshopper, then frog, snake, hawk, that is an example of a grazing food chain. Because again, you have to remember this, for grazing food chain, sun is the ultimate source of energy. And the first member or the component of the food chain is always an autotroph. So this is grazing food chain. Now, what is the other food chain, the detritus food chain? The detritus food chain, the, in detritus food chain, the dead, or decaying organic matter, decaying organic matter is the source of energy. Over here, the sun is not the source of energy, the initial source of energy. The detritus food chain are those food chains where the dead or the decaying matter is the source of energy. That food chain is called a detritus food chain. Now, example of detritus food chain, I'll just give you. Suppose there is a waste. Waste means suppose a cow is there and it has done excreta. So cow dung is there. So cow dung is a waste. But there are organisms which actually feeds on those cow dung. So there can be some microbes which is feeding on that cow dung. And the, from that microbes, there are predators of those microbes which is feeding on 
those so again i'm just i'll just clear this part i'll just clear this definition part and i will explain this over here so suppose there is there is a dead or decaying matter or some organic wastes so i'll just write it like this dead decaying matter it can be decaying matter of any thing all so that can be a dead matter of some plant so leaves are there leaves has fallen down it has died so it's a dead decaying matter so it can be waste materials also so waste organic wastes are also there excretas cow dung all those things are there so they are the first initial source of energy from dead and decaying matter that energy can be taken up by its side microbes or some fungi some microbes or fungi that energy can come from this microbes and fungi it can be taken up by some other organisms let us say there are some uh, insects or some other organisms i'll just write small verti lower vertebrates like this lower organisms which feeds on this microbes and fungi from there there can be some other organisms which feeds on this organisms lower organisms so all these things so all this but you have to understand the initial source of energy for detritus food chain is dead decaying organic matter and by this way it is different from the grazing food chain for the grazing food chain sun is the ultimate source of energy and the first member or the component of this chain is always an autotroph but detritus food chain what is the source of energy the dead decaying organic matter is the source of energy so there will be the initial initial organisms which feeds on those will be the first member it can be microbes it can be fungi it can be some insects also which actually feeds on those dead decaying organic matter so that food chain which starts with that dead decaying organic matter is called a detritus food chain so what we have learned so far we have seen what is a food chain what are the food chain the members of each component of the food chain called the producers primary consumers secondary consumers we have seen that we have seen the two types of the food chain the grazing food chain or the detritus food chain detritus food chain sometimes also is also known as the other name of detritus food chain is saprophytic saprophytic food chain it is also called as a saprophytic food chain the other name but most commonly it is called as detritus food chain now last to conclude this topic on food chain what we have under, we have to understand is that we have to understand the significance of this food chain what is the significance of this food chain what can we know from this food chain significance means what is importance what can we understand from this food chain the significance of the food chain is that it gives an idea about the feeding relationship among organisms if we study a food chain we'll get an idea how each organisms feeds on other organisms what is the relation between the two members of the food chain which one is feeding what that relationship that interactions we come to know once we study a food chain so food chain gives an idea about the feeding relationship among the organisms the second significance is that energy flow mechanisms and matter circulation can also be understood from this food chain what do you mean by this energy flow mechanism and matter circulation suppose we know that example for example there is an tree this that is a poisonous component a tree is there some fruits are there that can be poisonous but some organisms is eating those and they are surviving other organisms is eating that but that poisonous component is transfer getting transferred from the first organism to the next again if some other organism feeds on that that poisonous components will get transferred from that organisms to the next so we can see just an example i have taken about poisonous component it can be anything it can be any type of nutrients so how the energy is flowing 
or how the nutrient or matter circulation is occurring between a food chain between each organisms we will come to know if we study the food chain that will be known to us that if this animal is eating something else and I eat that animal that means what this animal is eating that will come to me. So I have an idea that which matter is getting transferred through the food chain. This is a simple explanation. Now the one more significance of the food chain is that understanding biomagnification. Now what is this biomagnification? I think you all know about this. This is also I will take an example. Suppose again I will give an example of some poisonous thing. Suppose there are some weeds or plants which is growing in the ocean floor and they contain some components which contain some component let us say it contains some chemicals called chemical X. Now this chemical X can be poisonous this chemical X can be good but it contains a chemical chemical X let us say. Now there are some insects water insects which feeds on this plants. So these water insects they feed on this plant it can be so this chemical X is going on inside this small insects. Now what will happen that if there are fishes which now feeds on this insects. So one fish is eating many insects. So all this chemical X which is present in this small small insects it has gone inside. So there is an accumulation of more chemical inside the fish and suppose there are many small fishes which is actually now eating the insects so all the chemicals will be going inside this fish. Now if you say a big fish is eating the small fishes so all this chemical is getting now inside the big fish now the big fish will have many chemicals inside it because the insect had very small amount it has been taken up by some small fishes the big fish is eating many small fishes so in the body of that big fish this chemical is getting accumulated inside and being a human if I eat that fish so all this chemical which is accumulated in that fish will go to me so and if a human say I eat more than one fish more than one big fish so all this poisonous chemical will go inside me or poisonous or other thing these chemicals will be inside me now. So what happens is that there is a process of biomagnification initially it was small only few chemicals was there but as small animals is eating on it larger animals is eating on that many small animals and this process is going on so we have a accumulation of these chemicals it magnifies so initially it was small a single organism is eating this chemical so it is there in the single organism but as there are many this type of organism is there and a single fish is coming and eating all those things so in the body of that fish all those chemicals is getting accumulated and similarly if there are some larger fishes which is eating those smaller fishes so it is again getting magnified in that body of the large organisms magnified in terms of what it is getting accumulated in that fish. So this type of and we can study this if you know the food chain properly which animal is eating what if you know this so we can study we can, or you can understand the process of biomagnification. So I think this was helpful we have talked about the food chain types of food chain what are the significance of the food chain in the next topic we will uh, we'll talk about the food web. So if you understand the food chain then food web is very easy so we will talk about the food web in the next topic and in the last topic we will talk about the trophic levels.